For many years now, I've been on a quest for finding ways to help people in this world through unconventional methods. You see, it all started in high school when God would give me complex questions that would torment me for hours until I could come to some conclusions. I would ask God why I had to suffer, and the answer was that He was using me to someday change the world. I could feel good about suffering in order that others wouldn't have to. That's when I realized that I can enjoy life just as much by suffering for others as I would by trying to catch the illusion of happiness. After suffering through the difficult process of telling my parents that I was called to the mission field instead of college, I sought out some intense missionary training. For that month, we slept four hours a night, ate very little, lived among the Africans, and learned a lot about how missionaries can sometimes hurt the poor, even with good intentions. There are many books about how we are messing things up in our efforts to help people, and I suggest you pick one and read it. They tend to get repetitive, but the most popular is called When Helping Hurts. I am happy to see the growing popularity of these opinions, but I'd like to challenge people to look harder. I would like to share my opinions, but I'd prefer to help you find your own way to think about and discuss these things. There are some books that make the case that you need to make sure your money is being spent efficiently. But it seems to me that many people get a project in mind and then will raise more and more money in order to help only a few people. If God calls you to do it, do it, but you should at least keep in mind that that same money could have efficiently cured innumerable tropical diseases. Before my next mission trip, I had a lot to process. I had a deep respect for the group's intensity, but I felt very alone when I didn't continue on with them. They taught me very well, but I felt called to find better ways to help people. When I went to Bolivia, I saw that a lot of missionaries were living rich compared to the people. I was in no position to critique them, so I felt very powerless. I tried to ask questions and get people discussing, but they were too busy to talk with a 19-year-old. It's hard because many books have done a good job attacking traditional methods for helping people without truly giving a good solution to take their place. Most of the solutions I see these days resemble the concept of a loan in one way or another. This means that we now don't give things away for free, but instead try to invest in people so that they pay us back, and then we can use the money to invest in other people. Loans can definitely help people, but I feel like this emphasizes money as the only solution to poverty. Many missionaries spend tons of money bringing a few people up to their level. Instead of humbling themselves down to the level of the people. In the end, though, the operation becomes richer and richer as foreigners send their money. The walls become higher and higher as they find out the dangers of being rich in a third world country until they practically have a little piece of America there. I see a lot of reform tactics, but what happened to efficiency? It's actually quite easy for a man to teach himself how to fish, so to speak. Uh, some things can't be learned without the efficiency of a university, but a wise man chooses the right things to learn and learns what is important and therefore doesn't even need much knowledge. Even the worst economies will always have jobs for those who are willing to work hard, especially in undeveloped nations. For the next year I, I worked and saved money. Nothing else made sense other than to send as much money as possible toward efficient organizations. I got tired of the lifestyle very quickly and, and begged God to show me another way. I tried to start discussions, but no one seemed to care. I decided that there must be certain ideas that could help people much more than money. Actions speak louder than words, but words have incredible power when backed up by actions. I started studying economics in my own way by interviewing farmers, etc., in Haiti and in the States. I also learned a lot from a very helpful internet website called Khan Academy. I had come to some conclusions that I thought I was alone on until quite recently. There is actually at least one documentary exposing the downsides to developing an undeveloped nation. I encourage you to watch Fed Up, the documentary, uh, especially the section on the third world. Anyway, a life without infrastructure can actually be extremely healthy. I haven't found a reason to disagree with drilling wells for people yet. But most other forms of infrastructure really just end up raising competition and stopping the lifestyle of family-owned businesses, etc. A couple years went by until things finally started coming together. I was in Haiti recently, not working for any organization, but working with a Haitian by the name of Ricky. He is probably my best friend to this day. 
The message we were sharing is basically how they can educate themselves in their own homes. We don't oppose schools necessarily, but we explain that children need to learn something in the home. The message doesn't make much sense for the states, but the root of it does. Discipline is everything. If you grow discipline, which, by the way, no one is born with, but if you grow it, you could have everything you need to support a family with a part-time minimum wage job. Many will disagree with that, that statement, and all I can say is you have to look deeply into your situation to see all the ways to change your lifestyle. Riki and I printed several thousand copies of the paper showing the Haitian people how to teach themselves useful things without using or without any resources other than just paper and pencil. Our message was that with discipline, one can live better without more resources. This means that without money, anyone can start working towards a better future, not just the lucky people chosen for a microloan. Instead of needing corrupt pastors to tell them what the Bible says, discipline allows the people to grow spiritually by reading the Bible for themselves and discussing it with friends. Another thing at the root of our message is to focus on a purpose in life. This way, instead of forcing a certain viewpoint on people, we simply focus on some, something that most people already agree on. People have been trying for a long time to figure out the right words, prayers, and Bible studies in order to properly disciple Christians, but I think the answer is quite simple. They need a reason to live and to sacrifice for it. This way, we can spend a small amount of time and still are able to leave them with their own ability to seek God. Anyway, our ideas have taken off in Haiti and helped many people, even though we spent very little money. People in our extremely populated neighborhood have even begun to call it the revolution and are spreading it to other neighborhoods. Unfortunately, uh, this message might not work for all countries, so let's start creating more discussions in order to find solutions that will fit each culture. The Holy Spirit will lead you, but sometimes that will be through your own God-given ability to reason. But don't just discuss it. We have too many people donating a small amount of time or money, but in order to correctly attack these problems, we need to sacrifice. Stop settling for regurgitated answers, but make a game out of life. I'm not joking. Everyone dies, so why not challenge yourself to do something extraordinary with your life before you die? Find a way to enjoy the sense of purpose instead of feeling obligated to cut out pieces of your spare time for your religious dues. I believe that we should take pride in the sacrifices we make, not to become legalistic, nor to compete with each other, but like Paul says, to boast in what Christ does through you. 